Welcome to the check-in on h &C, the show where we find out how people are coping during the lockdown and share advice and tips on how to get through it. In this show, we can't send our camera crews out at the moment, but that has not stopped me getting in touch. Coming up in this episode, I'll be checking in with Winnie Murphy, Head of Communications for the British Equestrian Federation, to get the latest advice from the governing body. I'll also be catching up with agency favourite and top eventer Simon Greve as he tells us how he's been keeping busy over isolation and how he's helped with the disappointment of badminton being cancelled. All to come on the check-in. Um, Winnie, hi, good morning. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, you've come on as a, as a spokesperson onto the check-in, the first ever show, so thank you so much. Um, but spokesperson for BD and the BEF, um, for people who don't know, British Dressage, British Equestrian Federation. Very busy, probably very tired. Um, thanks so much for talking to us. But first of all, how are you? How's it going? Um, it's been a couple of sort of pretty busy couple of weeks, um, understandably, uh, but no, it's uh, it's been an amazing two weeks in lots of ways hard, but just great to see some of the lovely stories and the sense of community that we know people in the equestrian industry. When we all pull together, we're a pretty special bunch. And um, I think I've got, I've got to kick off, excuse, excuse the terrible pun, um, with what stance the BEF are taking at the moment, because that's what people want to know. I mean, I know the top riders have probably got that information, but there will be some people who um, just got horses for um, leisure riding that maybe don't have that knowledge. Um, what is it you're recommending riders to do right now? Um, well, it's important for everyone to understand that we're for, we, we don't have any direct advice either. So we are constantly in touch uh, with the government via the British Horse Council. Uh, and, and we're following the overarching government advice, which is basically stay home and stay safe. So our recommendation is that people sort of don't ride. But we understand that there are plenty of people out there who have to ride for various reasons. It's the only force, form of exercise their horse can make. Some horses are, just have to be ridden. We understand that. But if you do have to ride, really, really, really think of uh, the conditions around your riding. Make it as safe as you possibly can. Stay on the premises where the horse is kept. Don't go out hacking. And certainly don't sort of take a risk, that little bit of extra risk and do something jumping or fast work. Just keep sensible um, and, and just do the best to keep yourself safe. But we 100 percent understand that there are people out there who do need to ride. But our advice is if you cannot ride, take that option. And there's other things you can do. I see um, I follow a lot of the celeb riders. Caroline Breen, for example, she was saying her horses are full of it. Um, so she's cutting down their feed and these are top show jumpers. Um, so and the spring grass is starting to come through, fingers crossed. So th there's other things people can do as well. They don't necessarily have to ride them to keep them sane. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's 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 do what you feel best for your horse. Um, and like you say, people get quite creative. Um, but we all just you need to look after your horse's welfare. <laughs> spring grass has its pros and cons. Some of them feel a bit more excited when they get a little bit of that spring grass. And we've got horses with coats changing. And I mean, my my old chap always used to feel twice as bouncy when his coat used to come through. So you used to get a bit sort of. Ooh. Um, so you just have to do what's best for your horse. Um, but it, I, 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 I'm a horse owner. I know what people are feeling and I, I know it feels sometimes like people up in sort of smart offices are making decisions without really thinking them through. But we we, we are thinking them through and, and we're trying to do what's best for society um, and as a whole. The, the, those hardworking guys out in the NHS are having a really tough time. So I think we need to just think, how can we lessen that burden for them? And, and do some, like you say, do some fun stuff with your horse. Do something that you wouldn't do. We see some great stuff about people giving their horses extra really good grooms to get the circulation going in a different kind of way and all sorts of bending exercise like the physio would do with carrots and polos and things like that. So there's lots of stuff where you can exercise your horse without actually getting on his back. 
and you, of course you can go on horse and country and look at all the master classes and be learning without riding so uh, there's lots on there as well um also there are going to be people who are worried um about income and how they're going to support themselves um is the bef able to offer any advice to any of these stables or is there a contact number that they can get in contact with is there anything that like yards that livery yard i mean there's so many isn't there there's latrec centers there's everything um is there some that somewhere people can go if they're really really worried we um when we when the government put out the first set of advice we pulled to get pulled it all together and and tried to lay it out in a relatively easy way for people to understand with all the government links on there. Um, but the BHS are doing a great job. Um, the British Greens Association, the Equestrian Employers Association, they're really, all of them are really being helpful in supporting that overall message that there is help out there. The government are doing their best to make as much help available as possible. We know that sort of for self-employed people, the, the, the timing of those payments might be a little bit longer than people would, would hope for. Um, but it is quite a complicated process at the end of the day. They've got to work through your tax returns and everything. But I think for everybody that's that's worried, and there's a number of people worried out there, I, I understand that. I mean, we're all having to consider various changes and things. Um, there is help out there. Um, there are numbers available. Just head to the BEF website and there are links outwards. If we can't help, then there's, we'll point you in the direction of somebody who can. Well, that's brilliant. And um, we can put some of those details on the screen as well. Um, and also, you are BD. That's how I first met you. You uh, have uh, been at many a championship with me, kind of pushing riders in my direction to chat to. Um, and that must have been such a hard decision um, for British dressage to make, cancelling all those competitions. And, and But I think now is there a sense of everyone is in the same boat. No one is competing. So has that kind of calmed things a little bit? People have stopped getting FOMO and, and they're not missing out. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is it is simpler with everything on lockdown. It does make those those difficult decisions a little bit easier. But equally, every time you make one of those decisions, it has an impact on 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 everybody. And, and they're, they're not lightly taken. We know that there are competition centers out there now who are going to struggle as well as the riding schools and that side of things. And and it's it's yeah, I've had some sleepless nights, I think, in, in all of this with with the information that we've got to compile and that the advice that we're putting out there, it's hard. It's hard on our side um, because we know that the impact that ultimately it's going to have. But I go back to my points and I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not sounding like too much of a broken record, but it's for the greater good. We just we the, 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 t I look at it, the, 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 the more we the quicker we do all of this and the quicker we comply, the sooner we can be back out between the whiteboards competing and enjoying our horses again. And um, I think um, my last question is a little bit about um, Tokyo. That's going to be put off now till 2021. We've got some brilliant horses um, which were being prepped, but also, um, I mean, Freestyle's quite young. Maybe she could do with another year under her belt. Is this a disaster for, for our British dressage team or is this actually maybe another year, another year to prep? Um, you can look at it both ways. I mean, both Charlotte's horse and Carl's horse, they're both still quite young in their in their careers um it may sadly be for something like uh, spenny and neville supernova it may just be that that year is just one too much for him but i mean hey look neville was amazing in those couple of events he managed to get to this year and and he looked younger and better than ever so you just don't know but you're talking about um, neville or spencer <laughs> <laughs> well hmm, <laughs> no but but again spencer's obviously had his own trouble with his back and everything so a little bit more time is going to make him a stronger rider you have to look at the positives to come out of it i think all they i think all they really really want at the moment is a date they want to know because they will look at that they'll say right the, the olympics are this date and the para riders too they'll look at their dates and say right countdown backwards let's make a plan how do i get make sure that me and my horse is at prime fitness on that day on day one of our olympics or paralympics and and, and they're working with their support teams at the, in the world-class performance program just to sort of manage what they do now where we go from here um from a british dressage point of view we're working really hard on having plans in place depending on what date that looks like so that when that green light comes we're out and we can get competing and they can start looking from a tokyo point of view but just us normal riders get to think about how i'm going to qualify for my pet plan area festivals will there be a summit will there be a lemur national championships and all of those side of things but we there's lots of work going on so that when we can get going then then we're ready but no i think 
in Tokyo was was a shame, but I think all, like all the riders seem to agree it was the right decision, and they feel better now for knowing. Um, it's just having that right. This is where we are, um, and the next thing for them to get in in the diary is is the date for next year. And it's everyone in the world. No one, no one's getting a, a, a like a, a head start on us. Everyone is on lockdown, so we're all in all in it together, quite literally. Um, and finally, Winnie, what are you doing? What's Winnie's lockdown uh, <laughs> kind of routine? Are you are you managing to get your day, your hour out in the sunshine? Um, and I know you've got your lovely husband at home with you. You're not ready to divorce him just yet. Not quite, not quite. Um, no, I'm I'm very lucky. I have um, a lovely dog called Cooper, and he is my my exercise each morning. And I've tried really hard to keep to my normal routine, so I'm up and out walking him bright and early because that tends to be there's nobody else about. So I'm doing my social distancing. Um, as you can see, my my dining room is now my BD office. Um, I'm all set up with, and and to be honest, the, the technology is so great. It's like sitting at my desk. I I have full access to all my files. Um, the only difference is I've got to walk upstairs to our little office upstairs to get my printing, not down to the photocopier. But on the whole, it's pretty it's pretty good. And actually, the coffee at home is much better than we get at work. So I'm pretty happy. Well, Winnie, thank you so much for talking to us. Some great advice there. And um, we'll put as many of the details for the BEF um, websites and BD websites on our page. And obviously, when it's all back up and running, we'll have the uh, Premier League's going to be on Horse and Country streaming. And there's loads of stuff. Um, we've been lots of chats with British Dressage and there's lots of exciting stuff coming between Horse and Country and British Dressage. So um, we're going to be chatting quite a lot, Winnie. Yep, yep. No, and just everybody, please stay home, stay safe and stay sensible. I'm going to add another another stay on the end of that, please. I know I know some of you need to ride, so please, please just stay sensible with it. But take care, everyone. Thank you so much, Winnie. Take care. Bye. OK, so uh, now I am going to chat with the wonderful, the brilliant, uh, very good friend of mine, Simon Grieve, who uh, is hopefully on the other end of the Skype. Um, I've had to ask him to download Skype, as I think I probably will have to do with loads of riders. But Simon, are you there? I am here. Hello. <laughs> it's working, maybe. Simon, thank you so much for being on my first uh, catch up show. It's so nice of you to download Skype. <laughs> No problem at all. It's nice to talk to you. It's good to catch up. So first of all, um, you are an eventer. You are basically uh, in pilot terms grounded. Um, no badminton. How much of a disappointment? We've got to go straight in with that. How disappointed are you that um, the big one? I know you were gearing up for it. Um, I don't want to start with doom and gloom, so we'll get it out of the way. How disappointing <laughs> has it been? Um, of course, it's, it's absolutely gutting. It's gutting for um, all the horses that I've got, you know, the aims that they had this spring aren't happening. Uh, we had some really exciting stuff lined up, um, which isn't going to happen. So, yes, really disappointed for everybody. But we've got to look at the positives. You know, we at the moment, all the people that I've, I'm really close to have all got their health, which is really important. Um, and I'm kind of taking that. And, you know, that's a real positive. So eventing will happen again at some stage. It just depends when it's going to happen. And yeah, that was my next question. Not only Babington, but everything has been cancelled. Competitions, training, going everywhere. We're all on lockdown. But um, I'm guessing you are having to go see your horses. You're having to keep them exercised and feed, well, general day to day. Apart from competition, how much has it actually changed for you? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we're still, it's, it is very different. Uh, still obviously looking up. Some of the horses have gone home. Um, you know, owners before the lockdown, they decided to take them home because they preempted what was going to happen, uh, which is understandable. Um, uh, but I am still going in every day. We've still got to look after the horses and I am still riding the horses and working them as I would normally have got some sort of less experienced horses that need to learn. So this is actually a really good opportunity for them. And I'm, I'm speaking to um, Winnie Murphy from BD and BEF, Head of Communications, um, and she was saying, obviously, the advice is to um, try and not ride if you can, and if you do need to, to be sensible. Um, you're a professional rider, so hopefully you're a, a little bit better than the average uh, person, but um, how much of those rules are you trying to stick to? Um, I'm guessing you, it is in the back of your mind that you don't want to fall off, you don't want to put pressure on the NHS. Um, it is in the back of my mind. Of course, I, I don't want to do that. So I am, you know, I'm not jumping at the moment, uh, and I'm being very sensible about what I'm riding and how I'm doing it. 
I think there's a real balance to be found because obviously if these horses, they're all fit competition horses, my horses are. Um, and if they're not being ridden, then they're probably going to be even more difficult on the ground to deal with. Um, so I'm also thinking of the safety of my girls who look, who look after the horses too, and myself who look after the horses. So there's a fine line to be found. Um, but I'm just trying to be really sensible about it, I'm not doing anything stupid or heroic or... Um, Sounds like very sensible. Um, also, let's um, find out a little bit about your horses. Obviously, people will probably know Splash, who you had at Badminton before. Um, but tell us about the horse that you were planning on taking to Badminton because uh, he's never been there and he's a superstar. Yeah, no, he's never been there before. He did uh, Bramham last year. He was 13th at Bramham last year and then he was third at Blair in the autumn in the two four-star longs, which is when it was just a great result. Um, and he was hopefully going to go. And it's a really nice story with him because his mum uh, was a little mare called Little Tiger who did badminton and Burley lots of times with Phoebe Buckley. And she won a, the best mare's prize at Burley in 2007 or something. And um, the embryo transfer is Freddie, this horse. And I grew into Phoebe at Burley that time. And Phoebe's a really good friend of mine. And it's a really, really great family sort of story. And uh, it's really fun. So it's a real shame it's not happening. But he's got a brother as well who Phoebe rides. And we're hoping that maybe they might get to go to Babington together on the same year because he's doing really well too. And um, how old is he? So is he, I'm guessing if he's not done it, you've got a lot of time with this horse to do it again. He's, he's, he's 10. So it, there's, there's plenty of, well, hopefully, there's plenty of time. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's really exciting. Really exciting. Because he's, he's a real feisty little thing. He's very similar, similar to his mum, um, although they're a completely different colour, but they've got the same attitude, a real let me out of them kind of attitude, which is great. He's brilliant. He's, he's really good fun. And that little horse of um, Phoebe's kind of really put her on the map, didn't it? Little Tiger. So, oh, um... yeah. Yeah. And we had so much, and we had so much fun, like, you know, because I groomed for her at all the big three days and um, we just had such a blast the whole time. And Phoebe, she's so ballsy, like, you know, it was just, we just had a laugh the whole way through. So, and, um, and then for her to win Best Mayor's Prize there was really exciting at the time. And, and for it to then, you know, years later to come to this is really, really cool, really exciting, which does make it even more disappointing that it hasn't happened this time, but it will, it will. And you're just coming off the back of injury as well. So you've had like a whole time out um, where you've had your operation on your shoulder and you have not been able to ride. And now this to add to boot. Um... <laughs> well, um, to be honest, like having, because I've had my shoulder problem and I've, I've had quite a few injuries through and, and illnesses through my time when I've been riding. So I've had quite a lot of time when I've had to have time off and it's time that you have to have off and everyone else is having a jolly nice time and getting on with it and you get getting feel, feel like you're being left behind. And, you know, everyone's in the same boat right now. So um, I'm kind of coping OK with this whole situation, to be honest. And I, I suppose what I want to know as well is, um, do your eventers, are you chatting behind the scenes? Who's your kind of, have you spoken to any of them, find out how they're getting on? Like everyone's on kind of house party and Skype like we are now. Now you've got Skype, you can use it a bit more. But have you, is there any kind of that going on? A bit socialising behind the scenes from the lockdown? Oh, well, I mean, I chat to my mates all the time at the moment, although <laughs> you sort of say, what have you been doing, mate? And you're like, well, uh, same as yesterday. Uh, not a lot. Um, uh, and I speak to Phoebe quite often and Izzy Taylor as well. She's a mate too. And, and everyone's the same. We're all, everyone's struggling, you know, and for motivation, I suppose, and just trying to keep sort of knuckle down and, and, and keep, keep as busy as we can mm -hmm. do and try to do the right thing. And um, yeah, how's Izzy Taylor doing? Because she is up at four, riding a thousand horses um, before most of us have had breakfast. So she must be really itching to get out there. I know she's always she's always so so busy. Um, uh, yeah, I think she's struggling with the fact that she's not going eventing every five minutes. Um, but you know, as I say, it's it will pass. You know, this will we don't know how long it's going to be, but it is going to pass, and we will be back doing it at some point. So, you know, let's be positive about this. And so why I've got you here, so um, your novel that I know uh, you're writing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do an interview with one of your friends, no one's Simon. No to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, will this be finished during um, this isolation period? Well, so <laughs> this, this trashy novel that I started writing, it's kind of, it's something that I started when I was injured. And I basically continued it on each time I've been injured. So I'm now at 15,000 words. So it's getting there. And, and this is a time to continue with that. So um, I'll keep you posted. Maybe there's a few um, aspiring writers out there who can give you some advice or someone who's written a book. That would, that would be great. 
that would be great because I have no idea. It's completely the blind leading the blind on, on this. But, you know, I just, it's just a really good thing. Like when I was injured before, I just felt like it was a really good focus to have. It was something to actually to focus on rather than worrying about everything. And it's kind of similar thing right now. So it's good in a way. It's good to keep your mind occupied because um, horses, especially for me, they are a kind of, they level me, they de-stress me. Um, and I suppose as a competitor as well, it's your life. So to suddenly have that kind of competition and everything taken away, you need something to focus on. Oh my God, absolutely. Yeah, because I, I, I definitely need something to focus on because everything is geared towards the horses and competing and every weekend and everything is sort of focused on when the horse is going to be at their peak fitness and all that kind of thing. And all that has got is gone. So, you know, I need to have something else to focus on as well at the moment. And I suppose while I've got you here, I'm going to ask you a few fun questions because this is, we're not talking about competition, so I can ask you whatever I like. It's great. <laughs> um, is there another rider out there um, on the circuit um, who you would aspire to be like? Is there a hero from past or is there someone out there on the circuit now that you kind of think, yeah, I, I wish I rode like them? Um, I, I always say I think Piggy's absolutely amazing. Um, I've known her for a long time and I've seen her right from Pony Club days um, all the way through and I think she's really inspiring. She's such a gifted rider. She's got such amazing feel and she's such a nice person as well. So, you know, her success is, 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 is fantastic and um, I'd love to be able to ride like her, but, um, you know, can but try. I'll, keep, I'll keep, keep on plugging away with the training and you never know, we might get a bit better. Well, I got to spend um, quite a lot of time with her recently with my um, documentary, Year of the Pig, which is available on Horse and Country for viewers to watch. Um, but I can see what you mean. She was amazing. And um, she's just like an extraordinary person, but so focused on the horses. Like, it's almost like other things kind of fade into the background and the horses there's a, are... There's a, there's a real love for horses and there's a real love for, for the whole thing. And it really shines through in everything that she does. She's helped me um, quite a lot. She's taught me quite a bit and, um, and I found her really inspiring and, and just a really good person to have on board. She's just really nice as well. Yeah, she's lovely. Really nice. They're a lovely, they're a lovely family and um, her sister's great as well. Nina, get on really well with her and her mum is, uh, is great fun as well. Slightly scary at times, but great fun too. And okay, so, so yeah, if that's who mom. you want to ride like, which horse would you have? Uh, I love... Well, I really like all of mine, to be fair. Um, but I, if I could, I'd love to ride uh, Toledo de Cursa, Tom McEwen's horse. I think he's fantastic. And he, he sort of come through alongside um, John Bill Metro, the horse that did Babington last year. Um, uh, they've kind of, they're the same age. And so I've sort of been watching him as, as he's grown from a young horse. And um, he's just fantastic. Such a, such a class animal. He is amazing, and I, I don't know if he but, is. But to be fair, Tom's fantastic as well. He's such a talented rider as well, you know. So you know, I don't, don't begrudge him it at all. He is an amazing rider, but I do look at that horse, and I don't know if it's Tom such an amazing rider or if that horse is just. He just looks so easy. He looks like yeah, I could sit on him. It's effortless. I know, and he probably isn't at all. But it makes him. I always think like. I well, think I, I think, I think that Tom one. makes it all look pretty effortless anyway. To be fair. Yeah, he does. Okay, right. So what are your plans for the next few days? How are you going to survive it? Have you got any tips for any of our viewers uh, who might be struggling with isolation, things they could do with their horses that are safe, um, or maybe a game of Trivial Pursuit? I don't know. Uh, what are Simon's tips for getting through isolation? Well, I mean, you could start writing a book. <laughs> um... Do you have a title yet? No, I don't have a title. I've got lots of words, but I've got a title yet. <laughs> um... And yeah, just keeping yourself as busy as you can with other things and keeping in touch with people. And if you're struggling, just get in touch with somebody. Oh, that's nice. And yeah, stay safe. It is um, it's scary times, but um, we're all in it together. And there's a real sense of kind of um, the nation pulling together. So it's actually really lovely. Yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, and that's, that is one really great thing about it. And more it's time to great. chat to me, Simon. I know, it's good, isn't it? It is. And I like the hair, by the way. Excellent job. Oh, thanks. I feel like you've put some product in just for me. I'm, I'm quite enjoying this. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so you're still, you are uh, wearing a hat. Right. Well, I'm, this is, we do not know when this isolation is going to end. So no doubt I will be ringing you again to find out how you're getting on, find out how your beautiful horses are. But for now, um, stay safe. 
Um, don't do anything silly with your ponies, um, but stay safe and um, sending lots of love to the horses. And um, thank you so much for being on my first episode of The Check-In. No worries. It's very nice to chat to you as ever. Thanks, Simon. All right, cheers. Bye.